I think we need to pride ourselves as the workers of, of this particular country that having the ANC being partnering with us and being the custodian of our constitution and our struggle, how do you then say you can vote for something that you don't know? Take, for example, an elderly person who was not receiving pension. If they were receiving pension, it was almost like 10 times less than what the other racial groups were, were receiving. And that person will tell you concretely, today, ever since I turned 65 years old, as a, as a man, I have been receiving my pension. Ever since I turned 60 years old as a, an old elderly woman, I'm receiving my pension. Today, there's a child who is receiving child grant at the level of the school because the parent may not be working. So that child knows, I'm going to school and I'm going to get food. At the same time, my parents are receiving child grant. Those things were not there. So we can talk about concrete things that were there. But SATU is part and parcel of the revolutionary movement that has been fighting for the rights of the workers and will continue to do that. Clearly, it is that basic education that we are receiving today. One of the, 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 the achievements is that we have been able to open schools. Mm -hmm. The enrollment is so huge because the ANC came and said, look, we want any child who is below the age of 15 to receive free education. Mm -hmm. And not only free education, but also free meals that accompany education because it is important to take care of your physical being so that you can then be able to learn in the classroom. It ensured that those particular discriminatory laws that were there between women and men, between white and black or brown, those particular things, the ANC really eradicated those parts of discrimination. Today we can talk about parity in, in, in law, in, 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 in wages. This is still a, a struggle in many, many countries, by the way, bro, Paul, mm -hmm. where today you go to countries where people are still fighting about parity between women and, and men, as if they're not doing the same job, as if they're not in the classroom doing the same job. We, are, we have passed that stage because of the ANC. In the world today, when you look at the ITUC, you know, index in terms of labor laws, many countries have mm -hmm. not even achieved that in 30 years. Mm -hmm. Basic education, fundamentally, Colonialism and apartheid was providing education, of course. Now here, many people who are confused, ah, no, the apartheid education was better than the education that the African National Congress is giving. Why have we always had problems in our country? Why did we have the very same people who think that they were educated, but they were undermining human rights? Mm -hmm. So it means, simple, is that people were getting literacy, but they were not basically getting functional education. That education was not really giving them the challenges to be abstract in terms of their thinking. It was not really, you know, you know nurturing intellectualism. It was not, not nurturing any functionality around that. So it was giving them, they have got higher education, but they cannot reason. We're giving education in this country for our children, which is free and which is quality, and we continue to have to do quality work that we are doing. And teachers are respected in this country because they can collectively bargain. Yes, we still have challenges, and we can resolve those particular challenges. But look, we have to make sure that we defend democracy. And that is my emphasis today. If you don't vote, you are going to allow anarchy, you're going to allow the ultra-left and the ultra-right wing to merge mm -hmm. and become a coalition that will take those rights that you think you have today. So it is your responsibility, it is my responsibility as workers, as the students who are qualified to vote, to make sure that we don't miss the opportunity to vote in order to defend our democracy, defend it and protect ourselves from a possibility of being invaded, of being shattered in terms of our dignity that we have already seen. People are saying, don't work for the IEC when you are a member of SATU. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to members of SATU who are working for the IEC, work with pride, serve your country, don't be afraid, because that is anarchy, that is dictatorship in the making. Once you are afraid, once you don't go and do that particular work, anarchists have won. Can you touch on tertiary education? There's been a lot of benefits with regards to number of graduates and access at that level. Yeah. The graph uh, speaks for itself. But when uh, the African National Congress took, uh, took over this country, we, we, we had universities that were not even admitting many of our students. Today we can pride ourselves that millions are in the tertiary institution. That we started with a mere 2,500 mm -hmm. of the students receiving a national you know, uh, you know, uh, finance assistance, you know, this uh, NSFAS. Mm -hmm. Today I can tell you that the NSFAS is covering 1.1 million of our mm -hmm. students. 
you know, going into the universities and being able to make a contribution in our country. Today, many of our students have gone to Cuba to do med med medicine. Mm -hmm. They've gone to Turkey. They've gone to China. They've gone to many other countries to do that. Many of our students are doing engineering in higher education institutions, and they are being able to fund it by, funded by the ANC government to go abroad and do this, and, but also to do those particular courses, even at home, with the, through the assistant of the African National Congress. They've just built two institutions institution in Pumalanga and in, 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 in Northern Cape in order to expand the education, but also to really eradicate the legacy of apartheid that was separating basic education from TVET, uh, separating TVET education from higher education and so forth, so that they don't speak to each other. So we need to be able to address that so that we can be able to improve the skills in our country. So today, a person in Pongola, a person in uh, uh, Vembe, a person anywhere deep rural area is able to send their child to university and then because they're not working, uh, they, they, they don't have the money to st educate their children, that particular learner or student is guaranteed by the African National Congress to get into a university and be paid for until that particular student complete. For the last 30 years, these gains have not come easy. And just to reiterate it, what should be the response to those who are trying to stop our march towards a united, non-racial, non-sexist, democratic and prosperous? We must be determined, Bropo. We need to make sure that we never allow anybody to intimidate, anybody to threaten uh, us from marching forward and building a democratic society a society that will then be able to be prosperous. We must not be, we must not cower away. We must never be afraid of that. We need to always show them by making sure that we respect ourselves. Uh, we do our work. We work as much as we can to ensure we improve uh, the conditions of our people because we know that uh, building a developmental state that is capable and that is sustainable requires us to be able to study and improve ourselves. And therefore I am saying, these people, you've got to also sympathize with them to a certain extent that when you have been invaded and then you have been mentally damaged by colonialism, it has said to you, you cannot believe in yourself. And these people don't believe in themselves. So from an education perspective, we have got to educate them. These who want to derail our project of democratizing our country. We have got to provide education. We need to be able to sit them down and explain to them why it is important for us to do what we are doing today. Secondly, above from education as well, it is that we have got to make sure that unity in this country um, is, not, is non negotiable. Because it's only through the unity for our people that we can build social cohesion. And having to do that means we can be able to deal with the ills that have been created by colonialism and apartheid. And therefore we need the unity of our people. And therefore we shouldn't um, really uh, stay away from them. The question would be, Brapo, why is it that Africans in particular and the black people in particular in this country are forming so many parties mm -hmm. instead. So it, it means we still have got a lot of work to do that it is not about the formation of those so many parties. It is about us uniting ourselves and then be able to change the lives of our people by making sure that when we are united, we can utilize our minerals because the more we are not united, basically we are exactly perpetuating what apartheid and colonialism wants. Don't unite them. Make sure that they're divided on the basis of language, on the basis of ethnicity, so that you divide them. When you are divided them, then you can steal their wealth. You can steal their minerals, and then you can continue to impoverish them. So we need to reverse that. So many of our people must understand we have a project, and our project is to make sure that our minerals in this country are going to be used for the development of this particular country. Crime and corruption remains a serious challenge. Mm -hmm. This cage in our country, how can we fight these evils? Mm -hmm. If I go and corrupt somebody and then I become a corrupter and the other person is a corruptee, so mm -hmm. if I don't go and corrupt somebody, there will be no corruption. Mm -hmm. If I don't accept bribes, there will be no corruption. Mm -hmm. If I don't go and steal and then there is no buyer for what I steal, there will be no crime at the end of the day. So we've got to deal with this thing from a basic level mm. and say we have got to be ethical. 
okay? We have got to be revolutionaries in the mm. true sense of the word, that revolutionaries serve people. Those who are working for government and are involved in corruption, we must expose them. We must never be afraid. Whether it's minister, whether it's a DG, whether it's me, we must never be afraid of exposing that. The law is there. Mm. The law obliges everyone in this country to report any corruption that we see, and therefore we have got to do that. If we don't do it, we are complicit, Brother Paul. It means we are going to promote criminal activity whilst we are saying we are afraid. This weekend, mm. the 3rd and the 4th of February, is voter registration weekend. Can GS on this platform make a call to young people, citizens, all those are, that are eligible voters who are not yet registered to do so? For me is to call upon the young people of our country and say to them, we owe it to those who fought for our liberation. We have got to pay our debts. And for me and you who today are still breathing when the others have lost their life fighting for these franchise of voting, I'm making a, an, an, a clarion call today to say, please wake up on the third, the fourth and go and, and, and register. It is the responsibility of each and every individual to defend democracy. It is my responsibility, it is your responsibility to exercise that particular right of voting. But to do so, we're not only voting, we have to hold those who vote accountable. If you miss the opportunity to register, if you miss the opportunity to vote, then you cannot come and then lament about the services that you're not receiving, about a, spe a specific area of delivery like education or health or, 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 or justice because you have denied yourself the right to vote for the right people, vote for the ANC so that you can then hold them accountable when they're not delivering on those particular issues. So it is not only a right, it is a responsibility. It is an obligation. Um, it, 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 for me, it is a conviction that we have got all of us drive through and make sure that we are able to defend our democracy. Please go and register. But at the same time, those who are working there, these are public servants. These are people of our country. Let's protect them. Let's make sure that uh, nobody intimidates them. And if they are intimidated, they must not waste, waste any second. They must go and lay charges against these criminals who will be coming to our schools and intimidating, coming to the churches that are being used as, as voting stations to go and make sure that they lay charges against these particular criminals. Because these criminals are not only going to steal our democracy, but they're going to steal our freedom. They're going to steal our rights. So don't allow them to take the first one, which is a democracy, for you to decide on whether to vote or not vote. It is your right to vote, and therefore nobody must determine how you vote and who you are going to be voting for, and then intimidate you on the basis that you're a certain member, therefore you cannot work. These are criminals, mm -hmm. and they must be known like that. They are criminals. If you allow them to rule this particular country, you must forget about the rights. You must forget about behaving a union, because they will come to your doorstep and say you don't have a right to form a union and they will beat you up. So make sure that you stop them now by registering and by voting come the date of the voting. On that high note, yes, uh, we thank you very much for making time to share your insight and wisdom with us on Sat Online TV. Let's meet again next Friday, same time, Arbulele Fridays.